Well, if you're anything like us, you're constantly on the hunt for new games to try out. And this week, we got a special list of our high five lucky games. So this is games that have a element of luck that's kind of a major component of the game. One of the one of those games that if you are unlucky, you might do terrible in this game. But of course, these are all games that we enjoy. Otherwise, it wouldn't be on the list. So, Michael, you yeah. got any pre- preview thoughts before we get into I the list? I do. I have two that I wanted to have on the list, but they slid down to honorable mention because although there's luck, the strategy of the game, in my mind, outweighs the luck. And so okay. that, that became a little mini criteria within the list. Doug, I have to tell you, since I've been putting together the high five list with you, this is the hardest list for me hmm. to whittle down to five. I, Interesting. It, it, it truly felt like I was picking which child is going to get the new shoes and which child is going to have to wear the other <laughs> child's shoes. Like it was, it was one of those decisions. It's like I, I have to put that game on the list. Oh, but I can only put five. So that's the only caveat. This is a really tough list to put together. Yeah. Well, and there's a there's some games that are almost entirely luck. Yeah. And then there are games that there is luck, and there's strategy around it. So I've got some of those where, but. There is a big chunk that if you get screwed on a dice roll, it's going to be bad Trouble. for you, and it, and it doesn't matter how well you strategize. Yeah. So uh, that was kind of my my caveat in there. What Good. do you got for number five? Number five is Clip Cut Parks 2019, designed by Sean Graham and Scott Huntington. One to four players, 30-minute time frame, ages eight plus. The complexity is a 1.25 out of five, and this is from Renegade Game Studios. And in Clip Cut Parks, you are actually – cutting your board and it falls onto a card i don't know what the smirk is for you don't think there's any luck involved (laughs) it's it's not on my okay there's terrible unluckiness involved because as the dice is rolled you really may have needed that dice roll the previous turn because you just cut off those pieces and now you can't possibly <laughs> do it because they're crumpled up on the table in front of you. This is a game that my family loves. The game comes with beautiful scissors that have a little ruler in them. Admittedly, having a wife, te- uh, uh, art teacher as a wife in the house, um, this is a game that has gotten a, a lot of play, especially when our kids were even younger than they are now so that's for me number five a game where i've had absolutely terrible luck and a lot of fun playing at clip cut parks all right i just noticed that i put the numbers on my list in opposite order so my number five which i have listed as my number one I've is done incorrect. That. so my number five we talked about in episode 12 and that is machi kuro published in 2012 masayo saganuma Pandasaurus Games, two to four players, 30 minutes. This is a a game where you are collecting buildings and then you roll a die on your turn and that die determines which buildings activate. So you could, you know, get this big thing that that fires off every time you roll a number five and you might never roll a number five. And, you know, you build this whole engine around various parts of, of your board and they just don't fire and then, of course, Michael's got this this big engine going on number eight, and he just keeps hitting it and hitting it. And he's rolling in the gold, uh, and he destroys you. We've both had that happen in in <laughs> more than once on yeah. each other's game. So oh, that's but, a great pull. Uh, the re- the rest of the game around it is is awesome, and it can be unlucky. Unfor- the good thing is the game is so fast that it it's never really that big of an issue. Um, so that is my number five, Machi Kuro. Excellent. My number four is Gans Schon Clever, or That's Pretty Clever 2018 release. Designer is Wolfgang Morsch. Stronghold Games published that one to four players. 30 minutes, ages eight plus, and the weight is 1.89 out of five. And in Gans Schon Clever, you are chucking dice <laughs> and then writing down. Maybe I got too caught up on the roll and write. But writing down the dice to try to get more combos. And there's a ton of skill involved. I, I thought about, eh, does this move down? Is this an honorable mention? But at the same time, anytime there's that much dice chucking happening, there's some luck involved. So for me, that that's number four. And, and a game that, Doug, I've only played once in person, but the app, my goodness, have I played a ton of that app, which yeah. you suggested to me. <laughs> so thank you for that. So great little app out there. Gans shown clever. Well, and that one is there's always a time where you get 
there's there's several part, parts during that game where you need certain results because you're kind of boxed in. And that's the luck, yeah. right? I have yep. all this strategy, but now if I don't get a two or I don't get a five, I don't get points. Yep. Yeah. All right. So my number four is a really interesting game, and I, I like it, uh, which is why it's on my list. But that is uh, Thebes. So this is published in 2007, Queen Games. I don't know why I didn't write down the designer, but two to four players, 60 minutes. In Thebes, it's almost like the, the Indiana Jones architect or uh, archaeologist type of thing. And you're going to these different dig sites, but the dig sites consist of a bag that you reach into and pull out tiles. Thebes? Thebes, yeah. T-H-E-B-E-S? That is correct. All right, got it. Yep, and so you are reaching into this bag to pull out tiles. Well, a majority of the tiles are garbage, which is just like really like a real expedition. You know, you don't know that you're going to pull treasure out, and so there's a chance that you can pull in and you, you know, time is kind of a big currency in this game. Yeah. And you're like, I just spent a whole bunch of time digging on this site, and I've got nothing. So it's like shopping for board games at the local Goodwill or St. Vincent de Paul. Yeah, yeah, you never know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates, or even if you get the box home, but then some pieces are missing. Ah. Uh, <sighs> You know, so then it's like I've I spent you know five five hours in the game, digging on a site. I pull out garbage, tires, and boots, and then Michael comes over, spends three hours, and gets three amazing treasure. Oh, nice! You know, so that luck in there. Some people hate the game because of that, but I just think the whole theme and and that it thematically works in that game. Yeah, it, that game's it makes new to sense. me. Doug, two thousand seven so, release. Peter Prinz is the designer, and Michael right. Menzel is the artist who did Cape May and some others that we've talked about recently. All right, so that is my number two, uh, number five, fourth. <laughs> Ooh. Yep, sorry to talk over there. No, that's but... my number four, Thebes. Cool. What do you got for three? Number three, number two, number one are all recommended games of the week, if you can believe that. Number three is by Sir. Richard Garfield, a 2011, and he's not really a sir. That's an inside joke. So please, don't don't troll. We we know he hasn't been knighted yet. <laughs> a growth mindset. Uh, King of Tokyo, 2011 release. Yellow is the publisher here in North America. That's I E O. I'm not gonna try to spell it. Two to six players, 30 minutes. Ages eight plus. The weight is 1.49 out of five. We talked about this in length on episode 10. This is a fantastic game in which there there's some luck involved with with the monsters and and how how you're gonna manipulate your monsters and you need the dice to roll your way in order to get your way. So. That's that's my number three. All right. My number three is one that you and I have played, but we played a two-player, and I th think it needs more players, so it may have left a bad taste in your mouth, but I love it, and that is Dice Town. This is a 2009 Bruno Catala, Ludovic Moblanc from Madigo, 45 minutes. This is... Oh, Michael's making the face. Um <laughs> This is an awesome game. People love this game, Doug. Of, of rolling dice that are uh, poker hands. And you're rolling, and you're trying to get uh, a poker hand, and then at the end, whoever's got the most uh, tens gets to take a certain action. Whoever's got the most jacks goes to the general store. Whoever's got the most queens uh, can steal cards from another player. All this type of interaction. But the interesting thing is you're rolling these dice in a cup and then slamming them down. And then you have to take at least one every turn. One die out to start slowly building your hand. However, you can pay more money to either throw that one back in and roll it again. Or you can pay more money to keep some dice. Which then limits the number of rolls that your opponents have as you're building these poker hands. And once you get four or five people playing this game... And it gets spread out, and everybody's chucking dice. It's really fun. It's very lucky. It is dice rolling. That is the crux of the game. As much as I can have a strategy like, I'm going to roll all aces this time. You know what? That may not happen. <laughs> so you're, you're kind of beholden to the dice, but the process is so fun. Uh, great designers. So that's my number three. Awesome. Number two for me, it's the third week in a row that this game has made my hi-fi, but I could not keep it off the list. Shanghai Rummy. This is Quacks of <laughs> Quedlinburg, 2018 That's release. That's a good one. Wolfgang yep. Warsh, bag builder and push your luck gem. That is an absolute McCabe Hall of Famer game. 
two to four players, 45 minutes, ages 10 plus. The weight is a 1.95 out of five. We talked about it in length on episode 49. It was our recommended game of the week. And what I will say, 10 plus does seem to be about the right age as you are building the perfect potion in your bag. There can be some really bad things that happen <laughs> if your potion explodes. Uh, but a game that where the resilience and tactical thinking and, and some basic math are all integrated right into that game. I, I love it. We love it. The only reason why I didn't put it on number one, because I didn't think it was fair to put it on number one two weeks in a row, which is <laughs> not a good reason, but it's my list. So that's what I have at number two is Quacks of Quedlinburg. All right. My number two, we do- talked about at length, number 10, or episode number 10. By Sir Richard Garfield, 2011, King of Tokyo. On the same podcast, we talked about it. Yes, we did. And on episode 10, we went in great length. So yellow, two to six players. Just a great game of rolling dice to try and uh, knock the monster out of Tokyo. And... um, Feels like Godzilla. I mean, it's just a a good little game. Fun game. Nice little toy factor, too. Yeah, and you know there there are times in the game where you're trying to heal or attack, and sometimes you just roll, don't roll those dice, and so you may get knocked out and eaten by one of the other monsters because of that. Uh, but the game is fun regardless. So crossover there, King of Tokyo. Awesome. My number one luck game is episode twenty two, Doug. I'm not going to put you on the spot and have you recall that. It was Clank. Oh, I was going to say Tapestry. 2016. <laughs> we haven't gotten to that yet. Twilight Imperium 6. 2016, designed by Paul Denon, Renegade Game Studios, uh, two to four players. That's not right, is it? Renegade Game Studios? Yeah, yeah it is. Okay, two to four <laughs> players, 30 to 60 minutes, ages 12 plus. The weight is 2.22 out of five. Reminder, a one out of five is like bingo or patty cake. Uh, 4.5 out of 5, your brain will melt inside your skull. And so this is right in the middle. It's a 2.22 where there's luck involved. Um, at some point in time, you have to get back above the ground. And if you don't, you're in trouble. Uh, and so it's a nice little deck builder, I guess you, you could say, with some racing elements. Oh, it's in definitely it as well. a deck builder. Yeah. There's no, with, no with, debate. I, I think you could almost say that every deck builder in some capacity is has luck. luck in it, depending yeah. on what you draw and when. Yeah. So that's my number one is Clank. All right. My number one is a game called Las Vegas, published in 2012 by Rudiger Dorn. Robinsberger, two to five players, about 30 minutes. So this is another dice rolling game. There are six casinos out on the board with a certain amount of cash attached to them. You roll your dice, and then you have to pick a number of one of the dice that you rolled. So if you pick your three, then you have to take all of the threes that you rolled and move them to the number three casino. And the interesting thing about this is that you are taking that constant risk of placing them and you want to have dice in reserve but the the interesting thing is is if i put two dice at the number three casino and michael has two dice at the number three casino we cancel each other out and then if if somebody else is there and they've got one dice they're going to take the cash and we get knocked out of it just because we had the same and that comes down to a situation where i've got one die left and i'm hoping like it just needs to go anywhere but the three yeah and i'm going to be fine and it goes to the three, and then we both bust, and we're not getting anything. And so that push and pull can come down a lot of ways to luck, but it's disguised luck, right? There's yeah. the the uh, the game around it that makes it feel less lucky than, than it actually is. Uh, I had a couple of honorable mentions that I wanted to throw out before we head out. Golden Ticket we talked about a week ago, yes, two weeks we ago. Um which has got that luck right at the end. It's a major factor of who actually wins the game. Uh, I'm surprised you didn't bring this one up, Michael, which is Impact Battle of the Elements. Well, I thought about it. You just it's think that's on- way too stra- strategic for no, you? No, it's on my honorable <laughs> mention. I just, uh, yeah. Yeah, so great one. And then I had to do a special shout-out be- uh, for Yahtzee, 
which I think is like a, the original luck game. And I think everybody went to that was in high school had one kid that was in their class that had the handheld Yahtzee game yep. that they would play in the back yep. like constantly. We've dated ourselves officially, but <laughs> yep. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. Yeah. What, what's the noise that it would make? I don't, got a Yahtzee? I don't know. It's like, it was like triple Yahtzee. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, wait, we're in math class. Calm down. So I, I have a lot of honor. honorable mention. I didn't know you were going to go there because I tried to stay at five, but I, you I have throw those. Them out there. Uh, tumbling dice is another one that we played over here where yep. you're chucking dice down a staircase. Uh, that's set up fr- as a Our friend Dan game. would say that that's a game of skill. <laughs> no. and, you, well, and he okay. may take it to that well, level. Well, yeah, he and, is, and, and with playing with your dad, absolutely. But the way you and I were playing it that <laughs> oh, night, no, that was we're, luck. We're all thumbs. Uh, Zombie Kids is another uh, little luck-involved game where you're chucking some dice. We love to play Dice Hospital. Um, and then here's the two that I... I Left off because I thought the strategy outweighed the luck. Call to Adventure is a 2019 mm. game. Johnny O'Neill, Christopher O'Neill, published by Asmodee. Just a fun little game that I think has some some luck in how the cards come out. And then It's a Wonderful World. Um, and I'm sorry, It's a Wonderful Kingdom uh, mm. that just came out. And, and that might be a little bit Call to the New Bias because I've been playing it so much. But the more I play it, I, I see some, some luck because some of the information is hidden. And so there could be strategy, but it could be luck. And uh, so, yep, those are there's a lot of games. I like luck games, so it was very difficult to put together. All a list right, of well, five. there is our high five lucky games, and we will be back again next week with another high five list. Uh, but before we go, I want to remind everybody to uh, check us out on Facebook, uh, Facebook dot com slash Game Schooler U. We also have Twitter. At Game Schooler U. What? I just thought you were going to mess up Facebook.com. No. <laughs> There's just, you, uh, you were pulling it on the recall. Like, no, what I, is the U? Yeah. www.facebook.com. Facebook.com. <laughs> and uh, Twitter at Game Schooler U. Again, check out our website. We've got all our recommended games there. Uh, every time podcasts come out, we'll have our videos posted there. Uh, should have some up on YouTube shortly. I think that's it. If you want to email us, email at gameschooler.com. But other than that, thank you so much for spending some time with us here. And We appreciate it. Get yep. out there and keep game schooling.